So hello, everybody. Welcome to session one of our November Caregiver Education Series. I'm thrilled to be able to introduce Mary Catherine Lundquist, who has over 28 years of clinical and administrative experience in geriatrics, specializing in dementia care, supporting family caregivers, training professionals, and providing community education. She is currently the program coordinator of COPSA, Comprehensive Services on Aging, Institute for Alzheimer's Disease and Related Disorders at Rutgers Health, University Behavioral Healthcare. COPSA includes the Memory Disorder Clinic, the Care to Caregivers Helpline, and COPSA Consultation and Educational Services. So without further ado, take it away. Thank you, Marlene. I'm so happy to be here with everyone today to talk about this very important topic. We know as caregivers, we have to deal with lots of things, right? And oftentimes, unexpected things pop up as well. So it can be helpful for us to stop and take some time to think about this so we can plan. And maybe if we are planning, we will be able to avoid some unexpected things from happening to us as well. So we are gonna cover some potential things that may happen. We're gonna talk about some strategies for planning, and then you'll have a chance after you leave here, Marlene's gonna send you some handouts. So you'll be able to work on your plan going forward. So although this is gonna be some general information, you're really gonna have time to work after this session independently on the own personal details for your life as well. So we do have a few learning objectives today. So we hope that by the end of this session, you're going to be able to identify potential unexpected events you may encounter as a caregiver. We hope you will be able to summarize strategies for planning and coping with the unexpected. And we hope that you will be able to begin to work on your plan to manage unexpected events. Now we know that none of us has a crystal ball, right? We don't know exactly what the future holds for us. Life is full of lots of unexpected events. So we live with a lot of ambiguity about what is going to happen. But we also know that there are some other things that might be likely to happen, right? Like we know if we have a throw rug there that keeps moving every time we walk past, there could be a good likelihood that someone might fall when they're walking past there, right? So as we talk about the unexpected, we're talking on both of these levels. We're talking about things that are way out there in the future. We don't know what will happen. We live with that ambiguity. And then we also talk about those really concrete things that may happen to us. I mean, we all know that we're aging, right? And especially if you're caring for someone who is older, maybe they have some memory issues, but maybe they have some other physical issues as well that are going to get worse as time gets on. So we can look a little bit into that crystal ball and we may be able to identify a few things that it might be likely to happen as time goes on. And then we can focus on those things and kind of come up with a plan that will help us in case something does get worse, right? You know, anybody here who might be caring for a parent who is older and who is driving, maybe their vision is going to decline as time goes on. So we know that it might be likely that they may not may not be able to drive long term. So we can think about what are alternative means of transportation for them. So those are some of the things that we can work on now. So before we go any further, I'd love to hear from everyone who is here with us today. Who are you caring for? Are you caring for a parent? Are you caring for a spouse? Are you caring for a relative? Maybe we have some professionals who are here with us too, who are professional caregivers. We'd love to hear from you. So if you wanna type in chat and let us know, who are you supporting? And as everybody's doing that, um, we know that some things are out of our control, right? There's nothing we can do about that. And some things we can control, our participants are sharing with us, my wife, my parents. So some people are caring for multiple people, my mother, my mother who lives with my wife and me, my mother. 
So a mix of people here, and yes, it does get complicated, especially if we're caring for multiple people at the same time, my husband, my wife. So the, the issues might be a little bit different, right? Especially if the person is living in the home with you or if your loved one is living in another location. My husband, my mother in skill care, my father-in-law who needs to move. So again, one of our friends who's caring for, for multiple people. I help with my mother's care. She lives with my sister. It truly takes a village. I also help out a little with my mother-in-law. So that's quite a few people there. And we have another friend sharing no one at the moment, but I wanted to get ahead of the game in the event that I do. Excellent. Very, very good. Thank you for being here. And mother who has live-in help in her apartment, I run back and forth and take care of all that needs to be done. So we have people with many different relationships here. Many people are, are juggling multiple people who they're caring for, right? Um, in addition to trying to take care of yourself and making all the things happen in your life as well. Some of our friends here might have other family members who are depending on them, not necessarily that they're aging or that they're having memory issues, but maybe some people support grandchildren or some people support their adult children who, who are working and even walking dogs or, or something like that. So we all have lots of demands here as well. So Unexpected can happen anytime and anywhere. Think about COVID, right? Who expected what we went through with COVID? No one could have imagined what we went through with that, right? And we know that other things can happen that are out of our control as well. It's hard enough managing those unexpected events, but we know it can add a layer when we are caring for someone who has memory impairment, right? The individual who is having problems with their memory may have complex needs, so it's important for us to kind of think about that and to take all of that into consideration when we think about our plans for managing the unexpected as well. So, and we have another friend who is sharing that he's caring for his wife who is 87 years old. Thank you everybody for sharing with us in chat. So, and just also wondering too, and everybody can put this in chat as well, has anybody recently had to deal with an unexpected event that really threw you for a loop? If you've had, we'd love for you to type that in chat and let us know about that as well. So anybody who recently had to deal with something, something unexpected, which kind of threw a wrench into maybe your, your daily life or your long-term plan as well, we would love to hear about that as well. So why is it important for us to plan for the unexpected? So the main reason that I see that can kind of help us is that it can give us peace of mind. If we're planning and we're thinking, it can get rid of some of the anxiety that many of us live with when we wake up in the middle of the night and we're worrying about all the things that could happen. Maybe you've had that experience in your life as well. And we have our friend sharing here. My mother fell and was in the hospital for six days this past summer. With her dementia, this was awful. I spent 12 hours a day at the hospital and then an aide. Um, I'm losing my chat here. Hold on, folks, here. I spent 12 hours a day at the hospital and then an aide took over at night. I had to beg the hospital to let me stay in the beginning. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry for everything that you went through. But yes, those hospital stays can be very complicated, can't they? Because our loved one needs us there with them. Yes, my mom seemed to decline cognitively all of a sudden with much agitation, looking for my dad everywhere from her wheelchair and constantly calling me to see if I've spoken to him. She also said there were people in her apartment who were not there. Very upsetting. Thank you for sharing that as well. So sometimes something physical can happen and our loved one is in the hospital or another location and that can throw a wrench in everything. Sometimes our loved one can develop a new behavior or a new symptom even while they're in the home and that can really change our daily pattern as well. And sometimes we don't know how to assist them. So thinking about these things can give us a little bit of security so that we know we know when these things do happen that we will be able to handle them. 
We can also have better outcomes if we've kind of looked into things and we have things kind of lined up in the event that this happens or in the event that my loved one needs this or that. This can all help us have the best case scenario possible. So um, many people have difficulty even falling asleep because we're worrying about all of these things. If you can relate to that, give us a hand wave if you have your camera on or let us know in chat. Do you ever have disturbed sleep because you're worrying about all the things that might happen? And if you do, type in chat and let us know about that. And our friend is also sharing here, my wife fell down the stairs. Thank you for sharing that. Those things can happen in an instant, right? And they can have really long-term um, effects for us as well. So does anybody ever lose sleep worrying about things that can happen in the future? We would love to hear about that. So thinking about these things can give us a sense of calm. And now I have a good question for everybody too. Um, when is the best time to plan for the unexpected? Anybody have any idea when is the best time to plan? And as everybody is letting me know about that in chat, we have our friends who are sharing, I have enough trouble sleeping with what's happening now plus nightmares, right? We hear you. I wake up in the middle of the night to check my cameras in my parents' home. Yes, 100%. We worry a lot about what can happen. Thank you for sharing with us, everyone in chat. And we have three of our friends who are saying, yes, the best time to plan for the unexpected is now. That's right. So everybody, you can stop what you're doing right now and you can give yourself a pat on the back. Literally give yourself a pat on the back, pat back because you are here and you are planning now. And that is a wonderful thing. So we don't have to wait until we get to that point where things are bad. As soon as we get that diagnosis, we can start the planning. When you're in the middle of a situation, you can do the planning. So it is always time to plan. We're going to talk about some strategies that can help us planning for the unexpected. The first thing we can do is to learn and to anticipate. What does this mean? It means that we can learn everything we can about the disease that our loved one has and the expected progression as well. So, and how can we do this? We can go online and we can research information. We can talk to professionals like Marlene, who is here to support you through so many phases of everything that you are dealing with. You can go to support groups and talk to people. If your loved one has Alzheimer's disease, going to a support group where there are other people who are also caring for a loved one with Alzheimer's disease, you're gonna learn about things that might happen for you in the future. You can talk to your doctor to find out about what they may think may happen for your loved one in the future, so you will, will be best prepared to care for them when that time does come. For instance, if your loved one has a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease, or if they have Lewy body disease, there is oftentimes lots of involvement with their motor abilities. They may get very stiff, which means that maybe a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, it might be really hard for them to get their clothes on by themselves or to walk up and down the steps. And it might be hard for you or the other caregivers in the location to kind of help them. So we want to kind of plan for that. So that might mean if you know that's going to happen, you can think about what modifications do I need to make in the home at this time in order to be able to care for my loved one in the home so they are safe and whoever is assisting them is safe as well and the caregiver doesn't get any injury trying to help the person as well. So, um, and our friend is sharing with us too, when his um, wife fell down the steps, I heard the bang and ran downstairs. I felt beyond her head, no blood, and I dialed 911. So excellent, you did the right thing, right? We, we run and we tend 
to whatever is going on in that emergent situation and we do what we can to keep our loved ones safe and to get them the care that, that we need as well. So, and this is a great example. Thank you for sharing this as well. You know, oftentimes as we get older, we have problems with our balance, right? Or we can start to have visual spatial problems where we're not, we might be more prone to falling on, on the steps and things like that. So learning more about what's going on in your loved one's brain and what's going on in their body and how that impacts their daily life can help us put some measures in place to kind of avoid some things that might happen in the future. Now, for all of us, sometimes we don't realize something is a safety risk until something happens, right? And maybe you have a personal experience of this in your life as well, right? Maybe your loved one has been fine cooking and all of a sudden there's that first time that that pot is kind of you know, boiling on the stove, right? And there's no water in it. So that first time when something happens, that can be a cue to us. Okay, something is, you know, not as it used to be. So we need to come up with the next plan to avoid anything unexpected happening in the future as well. So another instance of this is wandering. Um, do we have any friends here whose loved one likes to open the door and go out stare, to go outside and wander or, or, or pace? You know, if your family member is um, mobile and, you know, they're able to walk around and they have a lot of energy and they're looking for, for, for exercise, they might not be wandering now, but there might come a day where they do wander. So, we're not saying that they will wander, but thinking about that, that that could be a possibility, and then thinking about what you can do to add some safety measures in case that would happen can help you better manage that event when it does happen. Having things like an identity bracelet for them or having a little beeping alarm on the top of the door if the door opens, you're alerted that a person did leave, that can kind of help prevent that person from getting lost as they were wandering or even increasing supervision in the home can help prevent that from happening as well. And one of our friends is sharing, my mom is in a wheelchair. She thinks she can walk, so has to be strapped in or she would get up and go. She has opened the door to pull herself out in the hallway, has also gotten over bars in the bed to get out. Very dangerous. Thank you for sharing that example. Yes, so even a person who is not walking, you know, and has a wheelchair, they can still have the drive to want to go some other place and to do something else. And they can be pretty strong and they can kind of maneuver themselves as well. So thinking about these things and then putting strategies in place, like our friend is, is sharing, that they're using a strap to keep um, you know, her mom in the wheelchair, that's a thing that's preventing something unexpected from happening as well. So learning and anticipating, think about that for yourself. Do I know everything that I can know related to the diagnosis that my loved one has? If not, keep searching, go to your support groups, talk to your professional providers, read up on those things so you can find out about what may be likely for you in the future. Now, important questions here that we also need to think about. What if my loved one gets sick? And we do have some friends here who mentioned that, that their loved one was in the hospital and um, our other friend mentioned that, that his wife fell. These things are gonna happen and sometimes there's nothing we can do to prevent this, right? So if they become sick, you know, that can be a whole other host of things that we have to deal with. So, um, some things we may anticipate, some things we may not anticipate. Um, what if they can't go up and down the steps? You know, what's my plan for that? You know, if you live in a place where there are steps and not on a one level, thinking about that now can be a really good idea. What if they can't get in and out of the shower? What would I do then? Thinking about that, looking into what your options might be, 
what if they become incontinent? You know, that oftentimes that happens to individuals with memory loss and individuals as we get older, you know, maybe finding out about the best products to use. That is something that could help you avoid any unexpected things in the future as well. You know, as far as going out for, um, you know, lunch somewhere and not having any extra clothes with you or incontinency products with you. Always having that little emergency bag with you can kind of give you a sense of security as well in the future. Or what if I need overnight help? You know, what if it becomes more than what I can manage or my loved one can't manage everything on their own? Maybe I'm going to need to hire someone to come and live in with my parent, or maybe someone's going to have to live with us as we're caring for a spouse. And if so, that person is going to need a place to stay. So maybe you have a guest room, but you know, you've been using that to for a craft room or to store other things. So thinking ahead and saying, when that time would come, if that time would come, I want to make sure I have extra space ready for anyone who needs to come over and support us and they need to stay for the nighttime. So that's a good instance of I can start to do some things now to plan for my future to make things better for everyone. So the other part, the other side of this penny here is what if I become sick? And hey, with everything that we're doing as caregivers, we have quite a few of our caregivers mentioned here today. They're caring for multiple people in different locations. You know, many people here are working. Um, you know, we get prone to getting sick as well. You know, the flu is going around again, right? You know, RSV, there's lots of talk about that in the news as well. So if something happens to me, either for, you know, a short term, you know, I'm, you know, in bed for a day or two, or maybe even a longer term, like I fall on the ice and, you know, injure my knee, and I really have to not walk for, for, for two weeks, what would I do? So we need to think about what would my backup plan be? So, and in addition to who may be providing supervision and support for the person who you are caring for, it's really important for us to identify people who are going to be able to care for us too, because sometimes we are going to need care as well, especially if we go to the hospital. We go to the hospital and we're really not feeling well. It's good, as one of our friends mentioned earlier in chat, to have a family member who's there, at least when the doctor is there, you know, talking with you, so they can kind of be picking up things as well. So sometimes if you are sick and you need a hospitalization, it's good to identify family members who can support you when you're in the hospital and then family members or other supporters who can take care of your loved one as well. So we might need multiple layers to our dealing with the unexpected plan here. So one thing that caregivers often talk about, and I'm wondering if anybody here has any devices like this, if you are the well person in your in your in your home and you're caring for other people um, who may not be able to call for 911 or to get assistance if anything happened to you. This is also a big worry for caregivers. So oftentimes caregivers like to have like a backup plan for themselves, like a life alert, something that they wear around their neck or on their wrist or wrist or something that is sitting out on their countertop that if they call out, I need help, emergency personnel will be alerted right away. This is a really, um, good thing that many caregivers report gives them peace of mind in case there is an emergent situation and the person who they, they are supporting cannot call 911 or not pick up the phone and get a hold of other people who can support them, having a device like this can really give peace of mind. We have one of our friends sharing with us, my wife won't accept that we are moving with our daughter for support. How should I deal with it? Thank you so much for sharing that. And that is a very 
big issue that I think many people here face, right? We want to do things to kind of make things better for everyone, but the person who we are supporting has some resistance to that. We would love to talk about that more. Marlene and I are going to stay on afterwards, and we can talk with you a little bit, and we can set up a time to, to deal with that more too. But good for you that you're thinking about your next step, right? And that you're planning to be in, a, in an environment that would be better for, for both of you. There are strategies we can use to kind of get people to come along with us on, on that as well. So um, wondering, does anybody here have a personal alert device that they wear for themselves? We'd love to hear about that. Please type in chat and let us know about that. So um, it is very helpful as we are doing this to have emergency things like that to be thinking about our personal support network. And we want to be able to identify people. And you're going to have papers that Marlene is going to send to you afterwards where you can write all this stuff down. So don't worry about figuring it all out now. These are not things that we're probably going to all solve today, right? You're going to begin your plan. This is just an introduction to the things that are important. The first thing that we want to identify, who are the people who are available for immediate assistance? You know, if someone falls or someone wanders, who can I call who can be there within one to two minutes? You know, it might be a neighbor. It might be a family member who lives in the same town who we call and they can be there immediately. And then who are the people who can be there for more longer term support? You know, maybe you have a, a, an adult child who lives in another state, but if they have, you know, a few days warning, they can take family leave and they can be there with you and they can stay with you for a couple weeks. Who are those people? And one of our friends is sharing, we have an app on our phones that allows each of us to see where the other is. Very helpful. So those um, you know, tracking devices can be very, very helpful as well. Thank you for sharing that. That's an extra way for us to kind of stay connected with, with, with each other. So who are the people who are in your personal support network? Who can you call on immediately to be there instantly to offer hands-on support? Who can you call on for longer term support? Who could stay with you for a longer period of time? And multiple people may be needed at the same time. Remember our illustration of say, God forbid, you have to go to the hospital for something. You may need someone to be with you in the hospital and you may need one person or multiple people to be home supporting your loved one at home as well. So now I know this is a lot, right? And sometimes it, it can be overwhelming. So let's stop and check in with how everybody is doing with what we've reviewed so far. And let's talk about what may be keeping me from planning for the unexpected. When you think about this, you know, what, what may hold you back from jumping in and working on your unexpected plan? And you can type in chat and, and let us know what are some things that keep you from wanting to work ahead and plan for your future. There's no right or wrong answers here. So we'll even take gut reactions. Denial, right? That's so true for all of us, right? You know, many of us maybe recently have had the diagnosis and we just can't believe it, what's going on and what, what we're living with, right? So yes, yeah, sometimes we just want to deny that things are as bad as they are or they could get worse, right? 100%, I think everybody can relate to that. Some other things are fear of the future. You know, it sometimes can just be so scary that we just wanna pull that blind and not think about that. Simple avoidance, right? That if we avoid it, it's not going to be there and it's going to go away and I won't have to deal with that today. We don't want to worry our family. We don't want them to know how bad it is or that we're, we might need to ask them to take time off of work to come and support us. You know, we just don't want to inconvenience them and we don't want to worry them. So we kind of keep this all to ourselves as well. 
And, and for, for many of us, we may not be sure who would help. We know we're going to need help, but we don't know who those people are who can help us. So that kind of stops us in our tracks as well. And one of our friends is also sharing not enough time to set aside time to plan. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing that. So true. Caregivers, you're going 24 seven, right? No break. I bet a lot of people who are here today haven't had a vacation in a couple of years, right? So when are you going to find the time to do this, right? And um, so all of these things kind of impact us as we are planning for the unexpected. Let's just be aware of that, all right? So check in with yourself as you're thinking about this, as you work on your plan after this session, and just bring that into the conversation as well. And that one of our friends is sharing, taking care of day-to-day -day events takes so much energy. The uncertainty of the events takes so much of our energy. That is so true, right? At the end of the day, we don't have anything left, you know? Some of us might even be up all night with our loved one as well. Thank you for sharing that. And another one of our friends is sharing resistance, right? We might have the good plan and we're ready for it, but our loved one or our family members aren't coming along with us. And oh, another friend is sharing, I don't want to give up responsibility. Excellent point, right? If we invite other people in to help us, then we're going to have to let go. And they might not do the things the way we want things to be done. So, and that is a hard thing too. So it's just good for us to be aware of this as we are thinking about this and to bring that into the conversation as well. Thank you everybody for sharing on that as well. So I, I saw this quote recently on social media. Um, I don't have the, the, the correct reference for, for it here, but it just really hit home. So I just heard a podcast where a psychologist shared the best advice for worry. She said, the version of you that will handle that tough thing, if or when it happens, will be born into existence in that very moment. Trust your future self to handle future problems. So as we worry about the unexpected things that might happen and it kind of stops us in our tracks, let's also have confidence in ourselves like this quote describes here. When that unexpected thing pops up, we are gonna jump in and we are gonna handle it. And the person is going to be born who is going to handle that unexpected thing. So when we worry about those things, give yourself a little bit of confidence too that I am going to be able to handle whatever comes up in the future. And I know everybody who is here today has handled stuff already, right? We've had quite a few people mention that there have been falls or other things that have happened. You've handled it, right? You've stepped up to the plate and you've figured it out and you've done what has to be done. So please have confidence in yourself going forward. So other things just for us to quickly think about, what if I need to shelter in place or evacuate? You know, thank goodness we haven't had a, a huge storm recently that has impacted so many people like we have in the past. We just had the 10 year anniversary of Sandy, right? So um, let's hope nothing like that, you know, comes to us again. But these are just things that we need to think about, you know, think about what happened with COVID. Nobody was prepared for that. I think we're all better prepared now to, um, you know, face situations like that as well. But if I need to stay in my home for a while and I can't go out because it's bad weather or because there's another outbreak of some respiratory illness, you know, am I going to have all the things that, that I need? Will I have the support that I need? Or if I have to go some other place, maybe even, you know, the, the water pipes break in, in your home and you have to leave for a bit in order to get the work to come in to fix everything as well. These are things that we need to um, plan for. So what can we do to help plan for these events? So we want to have an emergency bag. If anybody here has an emergency bag, we would love to hear about it. Type in chat and let us know. 
not saying that any any of these things are going to happen, but let's be prepared. So what do we want to have in our emergency bag? We want to have copies of our most important documents. We want to have phone chargers. We want to have any special supplies that we might need. If we need incontinency supplies for our loved one, we want to have extra of those in there as well. So everybody, um, this and there'll be a list about things that you can check off to put into your emergency care bag as well. And then whatever is in your emergency care bag, you want to update that periodically as well. You know, medications change, right? For, for many of us, every time we go to the doctor, we might get a new medication, a medication might go away. So make sure all that is updated. It's always good to have an extra change of clothes, maybe for yourself and for the person that you are supporting as well. And we know sometimes everybody's weight can fluctuate, right? And the seasons also change. So it's good to visit your emergency preparedness bag seasonally to make sure Sure that if it's winter, you have warm sweaters in there and extra socks. And if it's summer, you have, you know, cooler clothes that might be needed as well. So always go back and, and update this. Talk to your medical provider about special things that you might need for your loved one as well in the event that there would be some type of emergency. Doctors are often great resources and nurses to help you plan for things, especially if your loved one has a chronic condition, right? If they have diabetes, if they need other um, su supportive therapies, they can be good information sources for you on this. It's important to have updated health information for you and your loved one, not just your loved one, but for you too, you are included. And this would contain things such as your health history, your loved one's health history, current medications that you're on, any allergies, all the names for the medical providers and the telephone numbers and copies of insurance cards as well. Wondering, does anybody have all this information already collected in one spot? Would love to hear about that. Please type for us in chat and let us know. But having all of this information updated, having a copy of it all in your emergency preparedness bag. Some people also keep a copy on their refrigerator. They put it like in a clear sleeve and they tape it or they put a magnet on the refrigerator and they hold all that there in the event that something would happen and emergency people have to come to, um, you know, support you in the home. People usually go to look to the refrigerator for that. So having all that collected is very important. You want to make sure that all of your financial and official documentation is in order. And one of our friends is sharing, no, but my husband has an app on his phone. All right, great. Apps are great to have all that stuff on there. If you can get a print copy too, and you can print that out, that's an extra layer of um, security there for you too. So, so, so think about that. Um, and this is just a very quick list of some extra financial thing, but a list of your assets, your bank account information, insurance policies, titles and deeds to the property, information on your cars, the numbers for your utility company. I know everybody's saying, oh my goodness, I have to collect all these numbers, right? Everybody's already talking about all the things that they have to do. You don't have to do it all at once, okay? Just things for us to think about. Security passcodes. Do you have a all your security passcodes in one place. That can be very, very helpful in the event of the unexpected. So then you're not searching all over or you're not lock, locked out of an important site because you forget what the password is. Keys, put extra keys in your emergency care bag. Safe deposit box locations and keys as well if you have that. And it's always good to give someone a hard copy of all of this information in case you need to leave your house and you aren't able to retrieve this, at least someone has that information in, in another place. Um, you know, driver's license, you know, all things like this can, can be very helpful as well. Um, 
Um, one of our friends is sharing, my mother is in the late stages of dementia in a nursing home out of town. I have all the documents in a notebook. It has saved us from lots of stress when dealing with unexpected events. Thank you so much for sharing that. So yes, this your loved one doesn't have to be with you. Your loved one can be in another location and another state. And our friend is sharing how much that has helped. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Some of the other very important things, um, I'm, I'm just going to mention these, we're not going to talk more in, in detail about these, but legal documents are very important, making sure you have the power of attorney, making sure it's a durable power of attorney, and this is you having it for your loved one or someone having it for your loved one, whoever that identified person is, but then also someone having the durable power of attorney for you too in the event that you are unable to make decisions temporarily for yourself. Appointing health proxies for your loved one and also appointing health proxies for yourself as well. Your last will and testament, your living will, and any advanced directives as well. Very good to have all of these documents in one place. So um, some our, our friend suggested that um, she has everything in a notebook, wonderful, all in one place. So, hey, when you just think about that list that we went over, it was a lot of items, right? A lot of items. So having them all assembled in one place, whether it is on your computer, like our friend shared on an app, or in a notebook, or get a binder and put everything in a binder, that can be a very, very helpful way to manage everything. We had a friend who, who shared with us that um, whenever she goes to the doctor, she brings the binder and she gets copies of everything that happens at the appointment, even copies of the lab work. She brings it home and she puts it in, in the binder. And when she realized that three different doctors had ordered the same blood work, and when she realized that she handed them all the the blood work orders from the other doctors and they realized that they only had to do one blood draw and that all three of them could share the results of that so that kind of really saved her the extra hassle of running around to three doctors and that that inconvenience and that discomfort her mother didn't need to go get her blood drawn three times so having everything organized in a central place can be a wonderful tool to help manage the unexpected so some people find to do simple things like making um, plans for automatic bill payment and stuff like that can really take one thing off your plate. You don't have to sit down, write out a check, put it in a mail, make sure you have a stamp. So do, doing simple things like that can be a big help as well. We, we love to accept. Um, one of our friends is sharing here, my wife has access to credit and bank accounts. Should I take her off? That's a big question. So it's something to think about and to talk about with your financial advisors as well. Sometimes people maybe give their loved one a special um, credit card that has a limit on it or a debit card that, ha that has a limit as well. So um, hang on afterwards and I'd be happy to talk with you about that as well. But yes, if you're if you're have financial questions, you want to talk with an elder attorney or your financial person who advises you to get some good advice on that as well. So now since um, most people here are caregivers, right, we have to think about this, you know, God forbid something happens to you and you're the main caregiver. You live in another location or your loved ones in, in the house with you. Um, maybe you don't have a family member who can come and live in the house while you're in rehab getting better because you fell and, and hurt your ankle. Maybe you don't have that person. So you might need a temporary stay at an assisted living or a nursing home until you're up and back on your feet and can provide the um, you know full-time care again. So not that you'll ever need it, but going and finding a assisted living or a nursing home that you feel comfortable with, filling out an application and 
you know, you might have to pay $25 or $50 to submit that application. You might never use it, but in the event that something happens, you know, that is unexpected and you're unable to provide care, you've already identified a place where your loved one could go for a short-term stay. All the paperwork is done. You just call them on the telephone and um, say, I need help now. Can you provide, you know, a temporary respite stay? So thinking about that, where is a place where I might want my, my loved one to go in the event that something happened? Talking to Marlene about places around where you live that might be good is a good place to start. Talking with people at a support group around where you live about places that they've heard good things about is another good place to start as well. Now, if that would happen and your loved one needs to go someplace and it's not with you, or if you are at the place where you are thinking about having your loved one move to an assisted living or a nursing home, oftentimes we know that as our loved one's memory issues progress, they're unable to speak for themselves. So it can be helpful for us to write up important information about them and include important things about what their life experiences were, what are their favorite hobbies, who are their, their children, what are the moments that they are proudest about. So this can be shared with other people who may be supporting them. So when they can't speak for themselves, we want other people to get a good sense about who our loved one is and what makes them special and what's important to them so they can engage with them in conversation and draw them in. And even if you have, if your loved one's going to be at home and you have to have a home health aide to come in to take care of them and they can't speak for themselves, your loved one, at least you have like a little sheet there with important information that the helpers can, can use to draw your loved one in into some engagement with them. And we have a wonderful little sheet that you can fill out, a fillable form that you can fill out on your computer or write it by hand, and you can make that a part of your um, unexpected plan um, bag too. So another thing that can be helpful is to have a list, updated list of daily schedules with tips on interacting with your loved one, including activities that they enjoy. You know, if you're unable to be there, what does your loved one like to watch on television? What type of music do they enjoy? You know, what is their um, stronger time of the day? What's the time of the day where they might get a little more antsy? And what are some things that kind of soothe them when, when those things happen? So having all these things written down can be very, very helpful. And then, hey, it doesn't do us any good if we write all this down and then we put it in a drawer somewhere and nobody knows that it's there, right? So you want to think about who can you share all these great contingency plans that you've been thinking about with, who are the family and friends who you want to share this with. So in the event that something does happen, they can step in and they're going to have all the information that they need. You can send copies electronically to people or in the mail um, and, you know, or and also set aside time to sit down and to talk about these things in person with people or through FaceTime or on the telephone as well. So they, they understand what you want and they can really support everything that you have listed in your plan as well. We had an, a, a, an adult child who supported his parents and he kept all this important information in his glove compartment because he said, if my dad calls me because he needs help with my mom or something happened, I'm going to have to drive in my car to go there. So he had copies of like the power of attorney, the living will and all of those things right in his, in his glove compartment. So it would be very easy for him to access them. So I thought that that was a great idea. So you think about what might work best for you you. So we have great forms here and Marlene is going to send these to you afterwards where you can fill out important information about my loved one and then also a great emergency care planning checklist. So you can go through and you don't have to do it all at once. You just do one thing maybe a day or one thing a week. And hey, when you do that one thing, you're a bit further ahead than you were before. So let's not get overwhelmed, right? We talked about things that might keep us from wanting to work on our emergency care plan, but let's not get overwhelmed. We know that progress happens slowly, right? 
We're doing so many important things during the day and the night. So you can just think about it as one small thing that I will do. So as we're, we're wrapping up here, we're going to open up in um, a few minutes here if anybody has any questions or anything that they would like to share. But we would love to hear from you all the information that we just shared here. What is kind of sticking out for you? We'd love for you to share one small step you will take to help you plan for the unexpected. So you can type in chat for us and let us know what's the thing that you feel is most pressing for you right now that you're going to start to take a bite and um, and work on this. And you can put that in chat for us. You mentioned about working with Marlene. What services are offered? Marlene has lots of great services. So let's let's go through everybody's chat and then Marlene can explain all of that to us. Um, and our friend is sharing, I will work on getting important documents in order. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, your 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 um, power of attorney, your durable power of attorney, your healthcare proxy, all those other important documents. We have a great checklist for you. You can just go through through. When you have five minutes, you can say, oh, I'm going to go and I'm going to look for that and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to put it in my in my special folder. Even if you don't have a folder or a binder, maybe you order that on Amazon.com today, right? And that's one great concrete step and that will get you started. One of our friends is sharing review durable power of attorney and gather documents in one place. Excellent, excellent. Um, maybe you have an old suitcase in the attic or in, in your basement or underneath the bed, go and get out that suitcase and put it on your extra bed or put it somewhere in your kitchen and every day just walk by and put something in there, right? And then you're making progress in assembling an emergency care bag for, for yourself. How about some of our other friends who are here today? What is one small thing that you will do to help you plan for the unexpected? From all the things that we've shared today, what is jumping out for you? I know so many things, right? Which one to which one to, to pick? So well, well, while people are thinking about that and there may be uh, the respite care, one of our friends is going to look into respite care. Excellent. Wonderful. So making so, some phone calls, talking with people at, at groups can be very, very helpful as well. So, um, so wonderful. Th thank you for, for, for sharing that. Thank you. So and you can keep those comments coming in chat there. Um, I want to thank everybody for being here. We're going to un unmute in a minute. Um, Marlene is also going to send you a follow-up email. I would love your feedback on today's session. It helps us improve our sessions for the future. So when you get this little link, we would love it if you would fill that out. Um, our friend is sharing, make sure family members know where the papers are. Excellent. Communicating with our supporters. And then our friend is sharing, take note of potential waiting list for eventual placement in a facility. That's right. There could be waiting lists, but at least you get your paperwork done now, you know, and that's taken off the plate because that can be time consuming. We want to do those things when there isn't a crisis. And what is the difference between a durable power of attorney and a regular power of attorney? A durable power of attorney stands even when you cannot speak for yourself. If you're, you know, uh, on medication in the hospital and you're not able to be responsive, then a person can kind of step in if it's a durable power of attorney. If um, your loved one develops um, dementia and their memory is progressing and they can't speak for themselves, the durable power of attorney speaks for you when you cannot speak for, for, for yourself. Yes, we're going to have a recorded version of this webinar, yes. And um, Marlene, would you like to tell us about the services? I think our friends want to hear about that. What are some things that, that are available that, that can help everyone? So I do have caregiver support groups, uh, both in person and online every Thursday at one o'clock. Many of the people here today uh, often participate. And like Mary Catherine was saying, so often you learn more from each other than you can ever learn from, from a professional just by what's worked for somebody else. And 
um, just sharing what you're going through with somebody else going through it at the same time as you, I think is so helpful. Also at the JCC, we have an adult day program uh, from 10 to three, five days a week. Uh, we offer respite for you. Um, we have breakfast, lunch, exercise, music programs, art, brain games. We have a full day of uh, activities. And even if your loved one can't come home and tell you exactly what they did, they do go home tired and happy. So uh, I don't think you could ask for more than that. And so if you would like, I could uh, put you on my email blast that goes out Friday mornings uh, so that you know I send out calendars and updated um, caregiver support group meetings and educational services like this. So if anybody has any questions, you could either unmute or raise your hand or speak in the chat, whatever you'd like. Wow, everybody's so quiet today. <laughs> Oh, we have a hand here. Go ahead, Sandra. Um, just to go back to um, what they were saying about the person that, um, I guess, spouse that fell. Um, I use a motion sensor, both like immediately by her bed. And also when she's like sitting in the living room space, I have a motion sensor there. So as soon as she gets up, like I'm jumping up. So I use that to help monitor where she is that's great. excellent and what kind of do you what get a message on your phone or what no it's a device that i can carry with me um like so if i go i have a two-story house so if i go downstairs or outside it's like um an alarm that goes off like it's a musical tone or it's either just a tone that goes off so when I'm asleep in the middle of the night, it's like under my pillow and I'm awake. <laughs> and she had, and it goes off when she moves? It goes off when she moves. So, cause she needs assistance, you know, going to the bat, like she needs help with everything. So, um, yeah. If you could send me that information um, in an email, maybe I could share it with everybody. Okay. Thanks. Does anybody else have any questions? I think we have another friend with a hand raised from iPhone 2. Yeah, that's Remy. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, hi, Raymond. Uh, good, good day. Thank you for your, your, your service and what you're doing. Uh, you said you were going to talk after the program went off, so I don't know if I'm going to ask my question at the wrong time. Uh, I'm, I'm the one who uh, was speaking about my wife is, is very uh, adamant about not moving with my daughter. Right, and I know that the decision is not hers any longer. But I was just wondering if there any kind of method I could use to uh, 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 get her to do this because we're, as I'm speaking, we're still looking for a place right now. So that's going to be it's going to be done. You know what I'm saying? And I also had was talking about like the credit cards and um, you know the bank accounts, things like that, right? And um, so uh, mostly everywhere she goes, I go is worth it. But she can she still reads the mail. She does those things. I don't want her to go online in order something you know uh so uh, i'm just wondering how, how i should deal with that raymond i think you'd really benefit from the regular caregiver support groups on thursday but oh, I okay always tell, i always tell everybody you know make it about you and not her honey i can't live alone anymore i really want to be closer to the kids and don't make it about her make it about you Okay. And that way she can't feel like it's her fault that you guys have to move. Um, and I really love the idea that Mary Catherine had about, you know, giving her a credit card that maybe has a very limited amount of funds on it. If you want to still make her feel like she has control. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. 
Yeah, and 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 everybody, we have to be creative, right? We try something. We don't know if it is going to work, so we just, you know, stick with it, and we have confidence that we are going to be able to to, to figure these things out. Um, in addition to all the great services that Marlene has in New Jersey, there's a free helpline for you, care to caregivers. That's part of Rutgers University. Um, you can call them and get one on one talk with a counselor who's been a caregiver and has professional experience and they can help you figure out the details of, you know, get helping, you know, your, your wife get on board with, with moving as well. So there's so many great resources for us here in New Jersey, especially in, in Marlene's area. Can you say that name again of the one, the contact at Rutgers? It's I'm care it to out. caregivers, and it's when you get the handouts from Marlene, it's going to be on there, the number. It's it's 800. I'll type the number in here, but you can call and talk one-on-one -on -one with someone who can help you um, strategize on, on these things. Thank you. This was so wonderful, Mary Catherine. I'm so glad we connected. and. I know you have so many other presentations that you offer. So hopefully, you know, as we go forward in future caregiver education series, uh, we can find another one for our care partners. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Everybody stay strong. Give yourself credit for all that you are doing. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Catherine. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.